Today I am presenting my tier list for alchemy, once again based on Thunder Dominion. Let's get things started. Now, Transmute of course has always been the butt of jokes with this set, but really the worst card in alchemy has always been Philosopher's Stone. Um, you know, if, if it wasn't awkward to buy, you might buy it more often, but it is awkward to buy and thus it's pretty bad. <laughs> At the end of the day, like it's it's a card that wants a lot of cards in your deck, but you need to draw a lot, um, and that's pretty tricky to make happen. Plus, all it gives you is coin, and generally you can get coin by other means, and on average it's not even worth much more than gold, if it's even worth as much as gold in the first place. So, yeah, Philosopher's Stone is it's pretty sad. Transmute, also in the D tier. Now, Transmute is now a little bit better than it used to be, Mostly because ways exist, which mean that filling your deck full of actions by Trash and Copper is a little bit better than it used to be. There's also a couple of combos like City Quarter that make it all right. Um, there was one time I lost a game to someone going City Quarter, Mass Transmute, and gaining a bunch of duchies to end the game. So I'm just throwing that out there. It's a possibility. <laughs> but I think you can very safely ignore Transmute most of the time it's in the game. Um, turning estates to gold is usually not uh, all that compelling and not worth the risk of opening with this thing. So yeah, pretty sad card. Also in the D tier, I think is Herbalist. It's one of the saddest plus buys in the game. Um, well, you know what? I have to put it in C, actually. I have to put it in C because uh, there are a couple of cards that combo very strongly with it. Namely, like a Capital and... Oh god other one is escaping me at the moment but yeah like there are uh, times when top decking the treasure at the end of your turn uh, makes a pretty significant difference on the game so yeah i guess i can't say herbless is really all that sad and it is a two cost plus buy option so it's got that going for it if nothing else so yeah hmm. terrible is, is it's okay golem i'm also going to put in the c tier Golem has the potential like to be pretty explosive, to dig through your deck and find actions and play them. Um, can be a pseudo-village and all that, but it's so awkward to set up. Um, you can pretty much always completely ignore it. Uh, like Often, if a Golem deck is possible, it's probably just as good to play a money deck. <laughs> um, maybe not, it's maybe not 100% true, but often it is. And I mean, if Golem could hit Golem, it would be so good, right? Yeah, but it can't. Um, yeah, not much else to say about it. Like It does less than you think it's doing a lot of the time. Um, and sometimes it skips cards that you would like to draw as well. So that's a little bit sad. It's not, not like Golem is without its uh, combos, and it's not like it's completely useless, but I think like the four and a potion cost really puts a damper on this card. And I'm just going to have to leave it here in the C tier. It's about as good as I can give it. Next we have Apothecary, which is in the B tier. Um, it's a decent card all around. Um, you know, it lets you sift through coppers, which is pretty nice on boards where you can't trash coppers for whatever reason. Um, also lets you look ahead at some cards and rearrange them, and that can come in handy with cantrips and things like that. Um, I, would, I would never say Apothecary is a power card, but it's certainly like a useful addition to lots of different decks. The biggest problem with it is that you have to have a potion to get it. But on the bright side, um, it your deck hurts a little bit less for having the potion with the pot carry around since it can draw them. So yeah, that that's okay. Um, but I think it's very rarely a big game changer. It's more like a setup card um, assisting other cards a lot of the time. Although, you know, there are certainly some combos uh, that can go with it, like, but mm, not really too many worth going into deal. Like the classic is Native Village Apothecary, but it's not actually all that good. It's just making Native Village slightly better than it normally is. So yeah, not too much to say about Apothecary there. Alchemist, of course, uh, the set's lab variant. Um, you can top deck the Alchemist if you've got a potion in play. Um, and usually when you're going for this card, the game is kind of trying to figure out how to do that in the best manner. Um, I'd say it's it's really just not the greatest card in the world a lot of the time. It's too much investment to go for. 
A three and a potion is an awkward cost. Having to have the potion in hand is very annoying. Um, and often, like, there are just other better draw options around. But sometimes you got to go for Alchemist. And then an Alchemist deck is not the worst thing in the world. Certainly, if you can get it going and keep it going, it's decent enough. So, yeah, it's overall pretty good. But I think mediocre. Like, it's not as good as a vanilla lab. Familiar. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, I guess I have to put it in B tier. I think um, it can be a very strong cursor. It can certainly can be very annoying. And honestly, even playing with it can be annoying since hitting that three potion can be uh, swingy to say the least. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not that exciting. It doesn't do anything for you other than curse the opponent. So it's a little like Sea Hag in that regard. Like other cursors just can do a whole lot more for your deck. Uh, whereas Familiar is a big investment um, where the only thing you're getting out of it is the cursing. So if they have a way to trash, often they can just completely ignore your Familiars. Uh, so still, it's not like a terrible card or anything. Um, it can be good to add mid to late game to pester your opponent a little bit, uh, mess up their deck after things are have gotten going. Um, and, you know, sometimes you just have to open with it because there's nothing better to do on the board. But I think like those situations are relatively rare. An annoying card, uh, but not really in a great one. I will say, like, if you can gain it through other means, like Lurker or Squire or something, often Familiar's a whole lot better. It's a pretty uh, aggravating card since it's so low risk as a cantrip. Next up is Vineyard, which I'm going to also put in the B tier. Before, uh, recently, I probably would have put it in A. Uh, it's a pretty solid all-around victory card. Uh, obviously, you want lots of actions in your deck, so a card that rewards you for having lots of actions in your deck is very strong. Um, but it's still a victory card, um, and the potion cost makes it pretty awkward to get a lot of the time, because you'll get like some pay out like seven coins in a potion and then you really want to buy something else but you're stuck buying this vineyard i don't know <laughs> it's pretty awkward uh, vineyard it can also be nice in like little rush decks that use groom workshop ironworks those kinds of things um, and overall you know, those are the games where it shines the most i think um, usually you can make a game in without vineyard becoming super relevant um, but yeah it can definitely be a strong card i just think it's not really up in the A tier, personally. Solid, but, you know, not incredible. All right, next up is Apprentice, which is certainly an A tier card. Apprentice is a pretty crazy good draw card. One of the best trash for benefit, I think. Um, even just thinning estates is pretty nice, but obviously what you want to do with Apprentice is trash big stuff, like golds, provinces, uh, you know, other high cost stuff to get those big crazy draw turns. Yeah, if you're not doing that with Apprentice, you're not really getting the most out of it. You can thin Coppers and Curses with it, but it's slow. At least it's non-terminal, so it's not terrible for doing that. But yeah, it really is a draw card above all else, and it's a pretty solid one. Um, especially if you've got a way to gain stuff out of the trash, then uh, then it's amazing. Because you can thin it, then get it right back with Rogue or something. Uh, but, you know, obviously that's a pretty niche combo. It's still, like, plenty good on its own. Like, you know, on your last turn, what? Then some cards you don't need anymore. That's fine. <laughs> go ahead, in the game. Yeah, very powerful card. Very powerful. I almost always go for it, I feel like. Uh, University, um, I think, has risen up in the ranks quite a lot. Um, you know, there, there was often a lot of kind of admonishing of this card because it's a village that doesn't draw and it seems a little slow. And I guess it is a little slow. Let's be real here, gaining an action that cost up to five as your bonus for a village, that's pretty strong. <laughs> that, that's pretty strong. Um, yeah, if you've got good enough draw in your deck, um, you're going to be getting a lot out of University. It's a very good card. Very good card. Um, it's, it's funny, it's like one of those noob bell curve cards. Like, noobs love this card, then you get more skilled and you're like, eh, it's not that great. Then you come back around to realizing, wait, the thing it does is pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. <laughs> you know, and funnily, like with Apprentice, like that's a really strong combo right there. You know, get a bunch of Apprentices from your university and you have lots of draw. There you go. So, yeah, it's almost always good. Uh, you can pressure piles with it. You can just get stuff you want to play with it. Overall, really strong card. 
I could see Apprentice above it, I guess, but no, I, I, I think I agree with this placement. And yeah, I guess it's better now than it ever was, especially with things like Silk Merchant that are just so good to gain for free. Yeah. All right, next up, Scrying Pool. Scrying Pool is a card that's so good, it basically has its own deck archetype, which is draw your whole deck with Scrying Pool. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, needless to say, drawing lots of cards is very good, and for this card that's relatively cheap, it's just two in a potion, to be able to draw so much is just kind of crazy at the end of the day. Yes, Scrying Pool, uh, Scrying Pool's nutty. It's nutty. I don't know. I don't even know what else to say about it. The spying effect is also not nothing. Uh, it can be decently strong uh, to discard people's good cards from the top of their deck, of course, you might not like notice how much of a difference it's making, but uh, it definitely does make a difference if you make something miss a shuffle. So yeah, it's overall uh, just a pretty crazy, awesome card, um, deserving of the S tier. And number one in alchemy is possession. Um, I think like you could argue either one of these is the best card in the set, but possession is just wrong, man. It's just wrong. Um, there's so many like broken interactions with that. I don't even want to go in to detail on them because I don't want people to learn about them because I don't want people to play with possession because I think like this card should be banned from the game. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just like, uh, you know, I, I genuine generally think Donald does a great job designing cards, but possession was something that probably didn't need to be here. <laughs> Yeah, um, when it's good, it just feels wrong. Um, it feels bad to play against, and it's better than ever these days. <laughs> you can It's a multiple turn card that you can stack as much as you want. Um, it, that alone makes it ridiculous. But also the fact that like you, you aren't beholden to the same disadvantages that your opponent would have from playing their deck. Like, you can trash their province, and it's nothing, right? Uh, oh, that's awful. You can spend all their coffers. You can use all their villagers. Uh, there's so many things that you can just mess up, like their scheme chains or whatever. Um, it's just a feels bad card all around, but it's undeniably powerful. And when it's good, it's absolutely broken. So, yeah, I'm gonna put it here. Like, there's sometimes when it's not worth going for. By the way, a little risky, but it's powerful enough that I gotta put it number one in the set. I I agree with this take. Um, that's all I gotta say about alchemy. See you for the next one. Short one.